back at the gym and training shoulders today. So we're starting off with shoulder press. Some people call it military press. We're gonna go seated so we're not cheating too much. And then I might move over to the machine. So this one's good for a bit of stability on the shoulders. And as you get heavier, it gets kind of a bit more difficult to get the weights up. And I'll talk a bit about getting them up as well, sort of easier way to do it. Then we can move over to the machine behind and maybe go some, some heavier sets. So starting with 25s, just gonna balance them on the knee. And then we're just gonna ping them up from the knee. Just bounce your leg, ping one up at a time. So that's first warm up set with 25s done, uh, just to get the shoulders moving. Now I'll probably knock it up to 30s for these seated dumbbells, and then we'll go to the machine behind and stick some on there. Right, we're up to 30 key now. So we chuck these up, same way, we're just gonna bounce them up on the legs, and then uh, we'll see how many reps we get out with these, and then we'll move over to machine if we can. So I think we've got a nine or 10 out on that, which wasn't too bad. Machine's in use, so we're gonna try it and get 35s up. Should get a few reps out on there, and then uh, move over if we can. So we've got like a hammer strength machine. In fact, I think this is life fitness, but very similar. And you're just loading the weights onto these and then just pressing up with the handles, adjustable seat. But that's the kind of machine you want for shoulders because everything's kept in place then. You don't have to kick the weight up like you do with the dumbbells. So we're on 50 a side. I'll say we can go a bit heavier and make sure you set the seat height on these correctly because there's no point in coming too low down. You want a decent range of motion, but you don't want to be uh, dislocating your shoulders trying to make like crazy ranges of motion on them. Mm. 
So we've got a few more reps out there just because I'm locked in position. And uh, that just means you can load the shoulder a bit more, isolate a bit more. It's still good to do some dumbbell stuff just to get that stability because you've got loads of stabilizer muscles working with that. And the more you do it, the better you're gonna get. But if you really wanna build big shoulders, you wanna stick some weight on and get some reps down, build a bit of strength as well. So pays to switch between the two, maybe alternate or do like I've done a couple of sets and then move over to the machine for the heavy stuff. Right, last working set. We've got 60 aside. It'll be low reps. Just fail on six. Right, we had a result with that last set. So I said that was going to be my last, but we'll crank out one more. We stuck another 10 key aside, so we're 70 key aside. And we'll see how we go. Might not even get them up, but we'll see. But last one felt good. <clears throat> the last one so we've got five out that's decent a 70 aside on the machine and uh, we'll call that a day and that's if you come down to the gym and you feel good and you feel strong and you feel like you've got another one in you get it done you don't have to moderate yourself and say I'm only doing X amount of sets we aim for sort of four sets three four working sets but some days you're gonna feel awesome and can crank another one out put a bit more weight on and that's how you improve you know so, I don't know if you've got one of these machines in your gym for shoulders. You can either stand and do both shoulders at once. I actually prefer to do one at a time. And I get really, really good shoulder pump off these. So we'll check it out, see how we get on. What about 20 key? Which, these aren't super strong movements because you're relying on kind of weakest part of your shoulder really for these lateral raises. And we're just coming up. And the good thing with these machines is that they're hard to cheat with. You've got to keep your arm, you know, in a certain amount of straightness. Whereas dumbbells, you can kind of start bending at the elbow a bit too much. You can really feel it in the shoulder. It's absolutely burning. We've just done those heavy presses. That's why I do the presses first and then onto the laterals. Laterals are important. They help give you a bit of width on here. Other arm now, same weight. And always get your stance right, have a shuffle around with your feet and just make sure that it's feeling, you know, good on the muscle that it's supposed to be working, not throwing the rest of your body in it, cheating, you know, putting yourself in a in a sort of cheat position. And you should feel everything through the top of your shoulder and down there, the sort of side of your shoulder working. I 
and already get an awesome pump. I'll probably do three working sets on here and then uh, we'll move on to the next exercise. And you can do these with dumbbells. So you've probably seen people, you can do a standing like so, but people cheat with that. Like I say, you can start curling the dumbbells out and uh, you start bending at the, the joint here and the elbow joint, and then you're just cheating yourself. Obviously that's less weight than if you've got the leverage and coming right out to the sides. So th that's what tends to happen with dumbbells. And uh, you can go seated, take any sort of um, bending the back out of it, but you can still cheat by um, sort of bending at the, the elbow joint there. And like I say, these machines just prevent you doing that. So I do like these. They lock you in position. And there's a lot said for machines as well. I love free weights, but cutting down on injury wise, because the machines do kind of uh, support you, you're not having to throw weights up in sort of awkward manners. And um, I saw someone dislocate their, their shoulder the other week on video, uh, someone trying to do some dumbbell pressing overhead. And then as they came back down, they just came back down too fast, didn't control the weight and it dislocated their shoulder on the way down. Whereas you're not gonna get that kind of risk with a machine. So if you've got injuries or you're getting old or you're just sort of learning and starting out, the machines are awesome. I would caveat that it, Go to a gym that's got decent machines. This is a Cutler. Hammer Strength are decent. Life Fitness are decent. I think Cybex are decent. But you can go to some place with these rickety rubbish machines, you know, the sort of Argus specials and whatever. And uh, I would avoid those things like the Plague because they're, they're, gonna, they're not gonna allow you to put in a decent working set because they're just too sort of rickety. And uh, you need stability, you know, when you're, you need, real good um, strong build of these machines like they're bolted to the floor the gauge on these things is you know really tough you're not going to sort of bend anything or flex anything right next set in fact we'll start right arm so we don't have to move the camera around for this one keep your back straight don't throw you back into it and try not to spring through your legs because you can do little toe springs, you know, that's cheating. That's not going to do your shoulders what they deserve. And the whole point is we're trying to burn out that part of the, the body, that muscle. So cheating them up in those other ways isn't going to burn it out. It'll get the weight up, but it's not going to achieve the desired result. <laughs> Last one. Uh. and this is what I'm talking about intensity make sure your working sets are right till the last like you can't get another one out so second working set on the left arm I won't bother recording the third working set because this is quite a, a boring exercise to watch but you get the idea I'm just getting as many as I can out and keeping my good form both sides machine here also converts to the pec deck but I like these for rear delts So we're on 
57 kilo on that one. We've got 12 reps, which is not too bad. And some people leave out rear delts, but if you want decent looking shoulders, you know, and that's part of getting that uh, V taper aesthetic. A lot of guys want that, you know, they want to be big on the shoulders, come narrow at the waist, then you need to be doing stuff like this because it gives you a nice well-proportioned shoulder. There's no point in doing everything to the front and then having nothing around the back. You don't get that nice rounded shoulder effect that people are after. So definitely do rear delts and uh, they're going to be a lot weaker than your, your other muscles because it's a fairly unnatural movement. You know, the, the movements that we're very strong in are movements that we do day to day. So naturally we're strong at pushing things away from us. We're strong at deadlifting, picking things up because those are all standard movements. Squatting, we're strong with that. We're strong with any sort of leg press because your legs are always working and bending up and down. We're strong with curls because you're picking things up. You're often just curling things up, you know, if you pick up a box or something like that. But in life, you're not really sort of doing this kind of movement and using your rear delts. So you're gonna be a lot weaker on those. Don't be uh, surprised about that or disheartened. I think I'm on 57 kilos with this, which, uh, you know, uh, that's split between both arms. So I don't know if it works out, it's half each, but uh, you know, it's not a lot of weight. It's uh, pretty light. And if I was doing dumbbells, I'd probably do like 15, 17 aside, something like that. All these weights are comparative. I'm only mentioning them to give you guys an idea what I'm lifting. But if you're lifting less or if you're lifting more, it doesn't matter. You know, as long as you're getting what you need to out of it, that's the important thing. And you're moving forward, you're increasing your weights over time. That, that's all that matters. more out on that one we to get 14 reps so that's good um, when I first started back doing these I was probably on 30 kilos and just about getting 10 and uh, you know you lose strength quick I'd gone from decent weights powerlifting you know I was throwing up all kinds of crazy stuff and then through injury and not training for a few years just lost it all and when I came back, back down the gym, I was benching like a template aside. You know, I had to start right back from the beginning. But if you're starting back, don't let that dishearten you because it will come back quick. And it's an enjoyable journey, man. You know, once you get your, your ego in check and you sort of stop trying to be the, uh, the biggest, toughest guy in the gym, then you can really start enjoying your, your own progression. You know, you've got to focus on how you're personally progressing and you've got to measure yourself against your performance not against other people's it doesn't matter what they're doing and if you keep doing that then you will find you get decent results you know if you let yourself get disheartened and you're thinking oh, i'm not benching as much as that 22 year old guy and uh you know you're 47 like me then you're just going to walk out of the gym feeling like crap and you're not going to come back and it's, it's not worth it you know you you've got to get your mindset round to that you're doing it for different reasons now. You know, back when I was young, I was competitive. I was trying to, you know, be the, be the guy uh, because that's what being a young man is all about. You know, you're in that hierarchy. You're all sort of vying for position and trying to compete for the girls and all that kind of stuff. But as you get older, you know, things change. I'm not worried about any of that anymore. 
I'm just trying to feel good about myself, look in good shape, you know, walk around feeling good. Like if I see myself in the mirror, I don't want to be uh, disappointed with what I see. And that has a, a great knock on effect, you know. In, in all aspects of life, I feel mentally stronger, better all the time. Uh, I feel good at work, I'm a lot more confident at work. I get a lot more done at work because I'm feeling good, I'm feeling confident, I'm feeling more energized. And I, I'm still tired, you know, my body still aches from training. I'm not energized in that way. I'm energized mentally, like I wanna do things, you know, I get up in the morning and my brain's switched on. I'm positive, I wanna get stuff done. Right, last set. Remember to keep your, your back nice and straight on these because an, another way of cheating is to kind of start curving your back down and throwing it out with that. And we're trying to put it all, emphasis all on the shoulders, on the rear delts. And you can just press your chest into the backstop here. Keep your, keep your form sensible. A couple more, come on. 11, let's go for 12. Done. So we're on to cables to finish. We're just gonna do some front raises. So you can do them on the cables, two-handed, up like that. But I've got a shoulder injury, so I actually find it better to do one arm at a time. Uh, it just puts me in a different position because I can kind of hold my arm out a little bit and it just takes pressure off the shoulder. I can do them like that, but I can actually feel stuff crunching in my shoulder when I do that and I'm pretty sure that's not a good sign. Um, it doesn't actually hurt, but I just don't like the, uh, the feel of it crunching. I'm pretty sure that's set setting me up for arthritis or whatever. So I just go with these singles. And we're only on. 10 key, so nice and light. Again, this isn't like a, a power exercise. So I'm still training to failure. The cables are a nice finishing exercise, you know, they're not, um, they're not something to stick with for your whole gym session because they are a little bit easier on you than some of the compound lifts. And if you're avoiding doing stuff like your shoulder presses and your, your compound stuff, your deadlifts, squats and all that, and you're just coming in here and messing about on cables, unless you've got like a medical condition, or you're you know, training for some really specific quirky sport that needs some weird cable movements, then they're a finishing exercise, man. They're not, a, they're not what you start with. But there's a reason people love them, and it's because they're a lot easier than them other exercises we just mentioned. We have a good rest between sets. Like, we're not falling asleep on benches or anything, but you definitely want to give yourself enough breathing space so you can put in a decent set. That's the whole point of the rest, so that you can stress the muscles to the max next set. If I went straight into a set, then I'm already burnt out. I'm probably gonna get another four or five reps. Whereas if I just waited an extra minute, I could probably do you know, 12, 13 reps. So why would I cheat myself out of those reps if I'm just gonna you know, drop my rest period? It's worth making sure you know, a good way to measure it is just uh, 
waiting for your heart rate to go back down, waiting for your breathing to go back down, which it pretty much has now. So we can move on. Next set. Again, shuffle your feet, get yourself in the right position. You'll start feeling where that is once you've trained a little bit. facial expressions probably look like I'm giving birth or something to go and then that's it done so again we've been in here about just over an hour maybe an hour and 10 minutes hour and 15 minutes something like that um, if I could get my head around shortening that I would probably try but you know I do enjoy training so I kind of tend when I was younger because I used to like being in the gym I would train for like two or three hours and that was one of the, you know, one of the mistakes I was making that I learned over time. You know, I used to equate training longer with better results. And I would hear maybe some of the pro bodybuilders talk about getting in the gym two or three times a day or training for like two or three hours. And you got to realize they were taking some substances that enabled them to do that. And also for them, that was their entire lifestyle. Like, you know, they lived in those gyms and um, there's a danger of you know, if you get into a gym and you really enjoy being there, there's a danger that you're just going to spend so much time training in there, you're never going to give yourself enough time to rest. And people underestimate how important rest is in terms of muscle growth. You know, you see guys train their asses off, they're not getting the growth, and the things they need to be doing that they're probably not is getting enough rest, taking at least a couple of days off a week, and, uh, you know, relaxing on those days. You can still do a bit of cardio, but not getting in the gym, and that's another problem I used to have was going to the gym on rest days. I ended up doing a bit of extra training. You know, the, the sleep's really important. The diet's really important. And they're all massively important factors. And it's like uh, putting a puzzle together. If you miss out on any of those factors, you're not going to get the result. And people think that they can not have a great diet and train really hard and that's going to work. It ain't going to work. Or that they can train and eat well and then never rest that's not going to work. You know, if training really hard and not resting worked, all the bricklayers and the guys that worked on sites would be absolutely ripped and massive, wouldn't they? But they're not, they're like wiry. They're still strong, but they're wiry and thin. And that's because they're never resting. You know, every single day they're doing real hard graft and they're not giving their, their muscles time to rest. If they sort of did, you know, a day at the building site, a day relaxing, day at the building site, day relaxing, they would get a lot better results in terms of aesthetic but then obviously they're not getting paid. So don't scrimp on any of them factors and never imagine that if you do scrimp on them that you're gonna be the one person that gets away with it. You're not. And it'll take you a year or two of training and wasting that time to realize it. There's all this stuff you can do on your own. All I'm trying to do is save you time.
And that is the end of shoulders. Have a great one, guys.